exactly good. Don't give it life. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Remember, Satan is real. He's your adversary. But if you listen to him and not to the Word of God, you're not even thinking from a place of a victorious standpoint, seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers. Amen? Amen. The devil's beneath you. He's not, he's not even close to you as far as power and dominion. He lost it all. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Sin and death has been defeated. When I, when I was studying this, he said, do you realize how fearless my children should be? You should be fearless of sin and of death. Because they've both been destroyed because you are not a sinner. You are a saint. Amen. Washed in the blood, filled with the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. He destroyed sin eternally. Amen. He destroyed death. You, we don't... We don't. We should never fear. When he showed me this, he says, "If my children saw themselves as going into the tomb with me and being raised with me, they would never fear the end of their days. Amen. It wouldn't be a concept for us." Amen. I talk to Christians all the time. Well, I don't know when I'm going. I don't know how I'm going to die, and everything else. You can see they worry. They have fear. <laughs> Church, don't fear. I've been to heaven. Where we're going, forget it. All right, it's a, it's a done deal. See, I don't, have to retire. I don't have to plan my retirement home. I got a castle. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I told you, my wife putting up me all these years. She gets a special castle. Oh, Jesus. That was, see, words are important. That word defeated means vanquished, effectually resisted, overthrown, frustrated, disappointed, rendered null and void or operative. Defeating it is the action that Christ took. Defeating is the action part of this thing. It's vanquishing, subduing, opposing successfully, rendering null and void. John 19, 30, Jesus said, it is finished. See, Jesus finished the work He was sent to do, which gives you the victorious life over sin and over death. You're no longer a slave to sin, but a slave to righteousness. Amen? Amen. You're no longer an old sinner saved by grace. Yes, grace saved you through faith. Okay, fine. But you are not that person anymore. You're brand new. Amen. You know, the Father, looking at all of us right now, doesn't see one of you as an old creation. Right. He sees you as brand new sons and daughters of Almighty God, made holy and worthy by the blood of the Lamb. And it's so important that we have a life of victory when we deal from a victorious standpoint. Until you see yourself above every circumstance in your life, until you see yourself as a champion in Christ Jesus, who's overcome the world, the works of darkness, and everything else, until you see yourself on that journey to the cross, on the journey to the grave, and on being raised from the dead, you were once dead, you've now been made alive. Amen? Amen. If you got your Bibles, turn to Matthew 28. Jesus... There's angels in the house. There's God in the house. The Holy Ghost is in the house. Amen. Let me tell you something. You, you know that you know you gotta understand something. The angels here listening to what we say. When I went in my office the other day, there was an angel sitting in my desk chair. I went, okay. I didn't have to say anything. I walked in that office. He stood straight up. You know, like I said, I don't know. I shared some of this right. Guess what, church? It's really neat because he just got up and he walked through the wall. He stood outside. He was sitting in my desk chair because the computer screen was up, the Bibles were out, the study books were out, and I just went. That was cool. We have no idea how much company we got around us. Amen. We have no idea how much protection we have. We were praying last night in the house, and God said, "You have no idea how many angels I have around you in this ministry right now." How important Amen. this ministry is to him. Amen. We got protection. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. They are for us. God has commanded his angels to protect us and deliver us and to keep us from evil. Army. If we only ever slow down. I had a dream last night at 1 30, shook me up. I was going too fast. If you're in a hurry to get somewhere, please stop. Yeah. Don't be like your pastor was getting anxious to get everything going. 
Yeah, yeah, None of you have ever been like that. You've never been anxious or anything. Boy, I got saints in this house. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Learn from your pastor. But it was slow down. One day at a time is our journey to heaven. Amen? Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to warm up here in a minute. Matthew 28, verses 1 to 7. Like I said, John was even saying the suffering he went through those nails in his hands, we all know about it, and in his feet. We can't. Have I been to the cross? Yes. Have I felt some of his sufferings? Yes, but a pin drop head. <laughs> because we could never experience what he did. First of all, we didn't come out of the womb holy. He left heaven holy. He was holy when he walked. He was holy when he died and rose again. So we can only, yeah, we can only fathom that kind of holiness. And that kind of suffering is beyond. See, you had to be a holy, sinless sacrifice. You had to. He had. He was the only one that could suffer the way he did to break the power of sin and death. He was the only one. He was the only conqueror. Everybody tells me, "Yeah, I'm a conqueror." Yeah, God bless you. I conquer all things through Jesus. I checked this morning. My conqueror lives within me. I gave up that hope and self of conquering anything or delivering myself a long time ago. I didn't save myself. I didn't set myself free. The one who came to set me free did. Amen. His power that raised His Son from the grave set me free when I gave Him permission to move in and move the demons out. Amen. 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 Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the tomb and behold, there was a great earthquake. See what happens when angels show up? Ooh, hallelujah. Mm. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door that it sat on. His countenance was like lightning. His clothing were as white as snow. <clears throat> Watch this. The guys who were guarding the tomb that they paid off to say he didn't rise from the dead. Remember that part? They've been trying to silence Jesus from the beginning. Good luck with that. And the guard shook with fear and became his dead men. You can't stop Jesus. Amen. We have dead men walking all over this planet right now. In our government, in our school systems, in corporate America, in foreign governments. And you know what? He's coming. Amen. And they're going to be his dead men. That's why I'm praying for the salvation of billions of souls. Because church, let me tell you something. There's a day coming and it's coming quickly. Where those that don't know him are going to die without him. And we as God's children need to get that message out. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> but the angel of the Lord said to the women, look at this, do not be afraid. How many times does God tell you not to fear anything? Yeah. Well, Hello, yeah. <laughs> for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For He is risen. As He said, come and see the place where the Lord lay. And watch now, go quickly. Tell His disciples that He has risen from the dead. And indeed... He's going, well, he's going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Wow. And another one in, the, in Luke translates it. For the angel of the Lord spoke to the women and said, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. See, we need to go out quickly and start telling people, we don't serve a golden image. We don't serve a wooden statue. We don't serve any Buddha or any foreign gods. We serve the living God. Amen. Amen. Serve, and that's the message. I mean, when I was studying this, he says, my church doesn't even talk about how alive I am. Mm. Oh, yeah. mm. No. My wife comes home the other day. She says, yes, yeah, some of the customers wonder what, what kind of special program we're going to have for Easter. And she looked at my eye and said, no, we celebrate Jesus every day, every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Friday. Amen. Um, although I walked in the store yesterday and they had Easter lilies and now I know who it's for. But you see, God's Spirit knew that already. We walked in the store. I didn't even have one. Usually we get them for Easter. We walked into Smitty's to do grocery shopping yesterday so we don't have to today. And because it's Easter, go home and make my wife a special breakfast and everything today. But guess what? There were these Easter lilies as soon as we walked in the door. I was back there and said, it's for someone. It wasn't for the building. Because we celebrate Him every day. We don't need an Easter lily. But a home does. See, we're going to anoint that before it goes there. Amen. So it goes there. Like I said, if they can anoint handkerchiefs, I can anoint a plant. Because that's alive. Amen. And it's going to bring the life of Christ to that home. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. It's so important that we are so sensitive to the Holy Spirit and that we remember that He's alive, He's living and active, and He's in you. 
He's in you. We don't want to give him permission to truly be alive. Boy, he just changed his shirt. Thanks a lot. Uh -oh. Yeah, get ready. Now, if you're afraid to have God live through you, that means you don't want anybody looking at you strange. <laughs> you're all peculiar people. That's why you're in this ministry. <clears throat> Well, not David, he's normal, but the rest of us. <laughs> no, we should be laughing. Do you see what God's telling you this morning? He just told me to tell you that. If you're afraid to have God live through you, He'll sit in there. And He'll wait for you to deny yourself and pick up your cross. Because if you want acceptance out here when you're sharing the gospel, I'm sorry, you're not going to get it. Amen. Not everybody wants to be loved by Jesus. Yeah. See, we know we're loved. They don't. Do you realize how many people say they don't believe in God, but yet they blame God for everything that's going on? Amen. I don't believe in God, but why is He allowing all this stuff? You just said you don't believe He has anything to do with it. But you're blaming Him for the evil when God can't do evil. He cannot and will not, because He's holy and perfect. Everything God does is done through His love for everybody. Even when He chastens us, he does it in love to keep us. But we have to get out there quickly and start telling people, when I was studying this, he says, my church needs an awakening to go back to the Great Commission and start sharing with people that I'm alive. I've conquered sin and death. I've paid the penalty in full for everybody that ever sinned and ever will sin. See, we've got to get the message back out there. People are perishing right now about Jesus Christ. And what a fretful day. I told you, I've been to heaven and I've been to hell. He showed me both places so I could tell people how real it is. People say, what do you know? I know that I've been there. Amen. He took me both places so I could tell people how real it is. When people say, well, it's not really real, I said, no, I've been there. Amen. No, people actually, this Christians, well, that hell thing, yeah, maybe, maybe not. I said, if there wasn't a heaven and a hell, like I said, we'd still be living under the old covenant. That's right. That's right. Trying to earn our way from God. When He rose from that tomb, earnings ended in your life. Yes. Trying to get God to love you ended there. Mm. Trying to work your way into heaven ended there. It's all by faith from the day He rose again. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> In Romans 8, when you go back and you read chapter 6, also 1 to 14, they say a lot of the same things in Romans. I almost want to type out both chapters. There's so much in it what Jesus accomplished for us. And it's so important that we see the journey that you took to get to the cross, to get to the tomb, the day you got saved, when you got raised from being a dead person to being alive with God in Christ. It's so important that you see that death no longer has dominion over you. You have dominion over it. You have dominion because you were buried with Him and raised with Him. Romans 8, 1 through 11. We're just going to read 1 through 4. It's so important, church, that you see yourself as brand new creations of God in Christ. Amen? Amen. This opening verse is so important because you got a world out there that feels condemned right now. They're blaming God for what's going on when it's the work of Satan. Amen. Because the things they're doing to our children and to people, not just here in America, but around the world, that's not the work of people. That's the work of Satan. Amen. And it's your job to put Satan in his place. Your job. God said, you go. I'm not going to do anything. I gave you the power to slap him around and beat him down. Because he's already been disarmed. We'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> Romans 8, 1 through 4. There is therefore... That means pay attention. Now, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life, who in Christ Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and what? Death. For what the law could not do in it, that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. You go to Romans 6, 1 through 14, our old man, your old man was crucified with Christ. See, when you come out of the tomb, spiritually with Jesus, you're a new creation. 1 John 5, 7, the old is done away with, behold, you become brand new. See, we really need to start seeing what He accomplished for us. 
The Father's looking at all of you right now and He just sees righteousness. Why don't we? See, when you get the concept of what He's done for you, He did so much for us that we don't really talk about. Like I said, it's amazing. We've been praying for one guy, <laughs> Jersey Joe, for years. His wife had passed away and he kind of was sinking like the Bismarck, but we kept praying for him. Well, you know what? God brought a woman into his life. He says he's an atheist. He's not. He's another one who blames God for everything, but says God doesn't exist. He gives you all the science equations. I met his girlfriend. She's a born-again believer. Amen. He's toast. He's saved. He's toast. She was smiling when I met her the other day here. I came in and out of here, and he came walking over high. She said, oh, don't worry about Joe. I'm a born-again believer. <laughs> and she's just the kind of pistol he needs. Because you could just see joy in her. You could see peace in her. And I said, you are so, you, I knew you were going to get him. I just didn't know how. Yeah. And now he has a smile. See, this, you know, we grieve. We go through sorrow, but joy comes in the Lord. See how faithful God is for our prayers to track Him yes. down? Yes. He had a smile on His face for the first time in what, six months, eight months, whatever it's been. And I'll tell you what, everything's changed now. Everything's changed. Like I said, don't give up on anybody. You pray that God put the right person in their life. Right. Tell them to remove the people that are the devil out of their life. So they can hear from heaven. But when I saw that, my heart was happy all the way home that day. I said, you're so far, you've got this all planned out. Amen. That man's as good as saved and on his way to eternal glory. Amen. Amen. And she had a smile on her face and I got this. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So it's so important that you see yourself as nothing of the old nature. See, when you came out of the tomb, you were buried with him, crucified with him. When you came out spiritually, you are a brand new being. That's why I tell people I'm only going to be 30 years old in June. First 37 don't exist. He died. He died. He died. Amen. I was born June 16th, 1991. I still remember that day, that Sunday morning, like it was yesterday. I finally found out what freedom from addiction was. I finally found out what freedom from hatred was. I finally found out there's a God in heaven that loved me so much He died for me. And not only that, He came to live within me and make Him, I'm His own personal temple for Him to come live His life through. Man, what a privilege we have, church. We're carriers of the fullness of God. That's what this body is. It's just not a body. It's a temple made by the hands of God to carry His presence everywhere we go. Yes. One of the moms last night to pick up some food for her and I to take home for dinner. We didn't feel like cooking. And guess what? I walked in there, walked over to the table with bread. He had two friends there, and the anointing just came out of me. They were like, who is this guy? <laughs> but it was just, I wasn't even going to bother them. I was like, the Holy Spirit said, I went over there and just told them about how great God is. They already know that. But I told them about the angels to worship in here, how we're a family of one in here, and God's building a family in this house, and how it's going to get better and better, and all the great things He's doing, and then we have a great expectation of what God's about to do. Amen. And the goodness of God, I could just feel God coming Jesus. out of me. They just sat at the Holly. table going, and Brett was smiling. <laughs> he knows me from way back. But you see, everywhere you go, God's there, and God's not only there, God's in you, waiting to manifest Himself through you. Yes. See, they need an encounter with Jesus, not you. Amen. Mm. Yeah. I got a couple of amens. It's not about me. It's about the one I carry around. Amen. Yes. You know how great that is? You know how happy that makes me to know I got Jesus in me? Yeah. I got Him living inside of me. Amen. And boy, it manifested yesterday. I was struggling with the sermon, and then He said, put it down. We went out. We went to the store. We went there, picked up food. And boy, in that time of just worshiping the Lord and getting refocused, man, it all changed. I said, am I okay down here? No, I was more than okay. I just needed a break from my desk. And then it all came to me. See what I'm saying, church? God's got this. You are brand new creations today. Amen. Stop living like an old one. Amen? Amen. If you got your Bibles, we're going to prove it right here. Colossians 2, 11 to 15. See, all these scriptures prove what Jesus did for you. See, we don't live under a law anymore. In John, the first chapter, what is that, 1 something, 17, I think? 
The law came through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Okay, so know that you know that you know. You don't live on the rules and regulations. The bondage of the law. We'll get to that in a minute, but it's so important that you see what he accomplished for you. When you start studying what Jesus accomplished for you, you're going to be so set free, nothing will ever bother you again. Amen? Amen. In him you was what? Circumcised with the circumcision made without what? Hands. That's the word of God, the sword of the Spirit. He circumcised your old nature, nailed it to the cross, put it in the grave. Quit carrying it around with you. By putting off the body of sins of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ, buried with Him in baptism, in which you're also raised with Him through faith in the workings of God, who raised Him from the dead, and you being dead in your trespasses, the uncircumcision of your flesh, He has done what? He made you alive together, together what? With Him. Having forgiven you all trespassing, having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements that was against us, that's the law, which was contrary to us, he has taken it out of the way. Watch what he did with the law and your past. He nailed it to the cross. Mm. Doesn't exist anymore. Mm. Wow. And taken to the nail of the, having what? Disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. See? He made him alive together with him. Church, you've been made alive. There's too many dead Christians walking around. Amen. We're supposed to rejoice in Him. We should be smiling. We should be laughing. We should be dancing every day before the Lord. Mm -hmm. You've been made alive, not in an old sinful nature, but in a brand new DNA. Mm -hmm. Now you have the nature of God in you to worship, to do His will. What a blessing we have. Everything Jesus did made everything you used to be past tense. And if you want to be like you used to be, we need to pray for you, get you, get you saved in the Holy Ghost in you. Amen. Amen. Because your old nature is not allowed here anymore. Amen. Oh. Amen. Because that thing's dangerous. You did well in your old nature, didn't you? Yeah. Well, you did, God. You've always been. <laughs> Yay, Valerie. <laughs> See, you smiled, and that's good. Because when you smile and you can laugh at yourself a little bit, Jesus really has the fullness of your heart. Yeah, because yeah. now your expectation is in Him to be alive in you. Galatians 2.20, you've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer you who live, but He who lives in you. And the life you live in the flesh, you live by faith in the Son of God who died for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. And it is so important that you see today the bondage that He broke you through. Now everybody says, well, the law is done away with. No, it's not. Got quiet, back up. I got back up. <laughs> I got back up. Matthew 5, 17. Do not think that I came to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but what? Fulfill. See, he wiped out the handwriting, the requirements. of. He fulfilled the penalty of the law, which we never could. See, everybody thinks, well, I have had Christians tell me, well, I don't have to worry about the Ten Commandments. He fulfilled the law. Go break them and then come back to me when you need help. Hello. Amen. That shall not commit, it's still in full effect. It's never changed, church. <clears throat> Nor will it ever. People use the grace of God for permission to sin. Let it never be. Never take His grace for granted. Remember, it's, it's the free gift of unmerited favor on our lives, okay? So know that He didn't come to destroy the law, but to pay the penalty of it, which we couldn't. See, that's why the blood of the covenant is so powerful. They couldn't atone for their sins. Because animals worked for about four hours. And they was out back to their old stuff. We have to have such a shiny example of what it is to deny yourself. Christ is the perfect example of a life that denied itself. Mm. When he says deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me daily, it's an everyday dying. Because the world wants you to be alive with it. That was part of that dream last night. God was giving me a warning, look out for stuff. Mm. Not just going through, you know, going too fast. But people trying to get back into your life, that's the second dream in the last three weeks I had about that. These people wanted me to go have a drink and stuff with them. And I went, Ew. <laughs> Bible says be sober. I've been sober for almost 30 years. I get drunk all the time. It's on Holy Ghost wine. <laughs> well, we're here worshiping, I'm almost falling on the floor back there because the anointing's so strong. That, that, that I can handle. But this is His temple. And he tells me to live a certain way, and you know what? It's paying benefits. 
I was telling the gentleman that we're getting music equipment from, he asked me how old I was, he looked at me and went, I said, that's in human years, that doesn't matter. I said, but God's been good to me. Amen. God's been good to me because He made me a promise in here that I'd be fresh and flourishing, that He would heal all my diseases, He would set me free. I would flourish like a palm tree and grow like the cedar of Lebanon. God made me that promise in here. And I hold these promises right in my heart. And I said, you said, you promised. If I'm obedient to you and do all that I'm commanded, all those promises are yes and amen. That's right. amen. See, that's how we live. That's how we live, church. You want the blessed life? You do all He commands you. Forget what the world thinks of you. That Their words don't mean anything. Amen. Amen. That's why when I see the government doing this stuff, I said, they don't see, do they? He says, they won't see it. He said, did Sodom and Gomorrah see it coming? Mm -mm. Did they see it coming in the days of Noah? Mm -mm. No and no. He said, did I warn them over and over? Yes. Mm -hmm. He said, no, they won't. Got quiet to God. Mm -hmm. That's why we walk humbly with God. Amen. Their darkness, their sins are His business, not yours. Mm -hmm. But we pray that they get delivered like you got delivered from your sin nature. Amen? Amen. Because every one of you was born with Adam and Eve's nature. Now Satan was the first one to rebel. They followed him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why, that's why when I say you've all got Adam and Eve's nature. But guess what? It got nailed to the cross. Amen. Amen. See, so don't let Adam and Eve's nature manifest in you any longer. You're not a slave to that. You're not a slave to the works of the flesh by which no man will be justified. But it's so important that you see why Jesus came. That's why Resurrection Sunday means so much more than a ceremony, than a lot of bells and whistles and, and, and like they wanted them. Well, what are you doing special for Easter? Worshiping Jesus? Okay, like we do all the time we're together? It didn't change today, did it? No. We came in here, we worship, we love the Lord. Amen. That's why the worship music in here is so awesome. It's just, it's just, and it's getting better. Amen. And it's getting going to get better, and it's going to get better as we come into these end days. Because I'm telling you, a church that doesn't worship and praise the Lord and lift up His name will be a building of dead people. Because the Spirit won't come dwell there unless it's invited to. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> these next couple scriptures for today is so important when you see before he left heaven what he was going to accomplish. That's why I said every Christian should be fearless. You should never fear death. You should never fear the ending of your days. First of all, if you're born again, heaven's ready. You'll get home when it's time. Don't, don't, don't push the envelope and get there too soon. Too many people are crying out, yeah, I want to leave this earth. You know what happens? They leave. We be careful with our words. See, I speak a great life. And God told me, my life's going to get better and better under the noonday sun. That's when we go home. Because it says so. It's in the Proverbs. He says, your days are going to get brighter and brighter under the noonday sun. That's when the sun comes for me. Amen? So I expect my life to be like that. Because the Word told me, He can't lie. And if God makes me a promise, I'll be honest, I'm not arrogant about it. I'm quite humble about it, but I hold them to it. You said. Amen. Me, we, when him and I talk, yeah, we talk. Now I'm told to listen. Because <laughs> sometimes you can get carried away with yourself. None of you have. Mm -hmm. None of you have ever argued with God, ever. Well, praise God. We know you haven't, friend. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Like I said, I was a good wrestler, and I never won wrestling match with God. I never won one of them. Loved wrestling, but guess what? Didn't win a match. And it's the greatest thing that ever happened to me because I don't bother wrestling anymore. You know what happens? He wears you down until you just say, not my will, your will be done, Lord. That's where the life of victory and peace is. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you got your Bibles, you don't need to go there. I'm only going to read one verse. And there's one verse in Isaiah. Before he left heaven, in Hosea 13, 14, look what the Lord says. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. I will be your plagues, O grave. I will be your destruction. Pity is hidden from my eyes. It is so important today that you see why he came. He literally came to destroy sin and death. He said it back in Hosea. 
But then you go to Isaiah 25, 8. Watch what he says about death. He will swallow up death forever. Wow. Mm. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. The rebuke of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. Revelation 21, 4 says... Where am I? Here we are. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Nor shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. See, He came to secure your eternal destination. He came so you never fear death and when you leave this planet. Because when you get home, I didn't see anybody crying. I didn't see any pain. I saw everybody worshiping and rejoicing with Jesus. And it's the most beautiful thing to know that before He even made this universe, He knew He was going to come and swallow up death. He knew He was going to destroy the, be the enemy of the grave. See, under the Old Covenant, they were afraid of the grave. They were trying to earn their eternal destination through works of the flesh. They were, doing, they were striving all the time. See, we walk in the newness of life. I don't have to strive over anything. God says, I'll take care of everything if you follow me. That ends the conversation. That's why we don't, my wife and I don't worry about money. We don't worry about how things are going to work out. He says, I'm going to take care of things. You know what? He takes care of it. Our job is to pray and obey and have ears to hear what the Spirit says. See, that's what the blessed life is. Stop trying to get something from God. You inherited a blessing the day you got saved. You inherited Abraham's blessings the day you made Jesus Lord and Savior of your life. They are yours. And not by what you go do, but by what you believe. Your healing is what you believe. Do you believe you're already healed? Your body may be trying to tell you no. The devil and people may tell you no. But God's Word says, yes, you are. Amen. It says, by His strife, ye were healed. Past tense. Already has happened. You have been redeemed from the curse of the law. So no plague, no pestilence can befall you. But do you believe that what He said is true? Oh, Jesus is calling somebody. But do you see the importance of a church? You should be fearless Christians on this planet. Fearless. Amen. You shouldn't be concerned with what one person thinks about you when you're out witnessing for Christ. God, if I was afraid what people thought of me, oh man, I would have had to quit about two days in. I was in trouble the day I got home from church that Sunday morning. My roommate both names went, oh my God, you've lost your mind. Well, kind of, yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but I had the boldness within 12 hours, don't, within 10 hours of getting saved, to tell people they need to get saved and give their heart to Jesus. Same day. I said, you better get right with Jesus. Because I knew I had been changed. There was such a transformation on a Sunday morning that I went immediately out of that church, went to a picnic, went home, and my walk with Jesus really began the same day. Because I knew I had an encounter with God. And I knew He loved me. I was expecting hell and damnation, and all I got that first day at church was love, and He's never stopped, and He never will stop. So you see, we need to go out and make an impact. I'm not worried about what people think of me when I'm praying for people in the stores and I'm witnessing for Christ, or even in Mom's last night. I was just sharing Jesus. Let me tell you something. Share Jesus with people, not you. Your testimony is Jesus saved you and He's alive. He washed you in His blood. That's your testimony. Everybody wants a big testimony. Your testimony is Jesus. <laughs> Tell them about Jesus. Man, just that name makes my whole body burn. Jesus is the name above every other name. Amen. Jesus' Amen. name is the Amen. only one that saves. Mm -hmm. Jesus' yes, name yes, makes yes. every demon flee from this hour. Amen. 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 And the name of Jesus proclaimed in our government will make yes. all the corrupt politicians either get saved or leave. Because this is one nation under God. Amen. Amen. And Amen. Washington, D.C. better look out because God's a bit upset with them right about now. Mm -hmm. They better start repenting. But you know what? A lot of them can't stop. I told my wife, you got generational darkness and perversion and ungodliness. And you know what? They're not going to change. Some people are not going to change. I've said it before, you can lead the horses to water, you can't make them drink it. If people don't receive what you say to Him, they have not rejected you, but Christ, the hope of glory, who lives in you. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> you got your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. All that Jesus has done. 
the empty tomb, when we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, He did so much. He accomplished so much. He finished everything the Father sent Him to do. Boy, don't you want to get to heaven to know you finished everything God created for you to do? Man, that, if that was really our desires, we would really be totally submitted to His will. See, Jesus finished everything the Father sent Him to do. Everything completed it. Boy, if we started putting that in our heart, God, I want to complete everything that You sent me to do. And you know what He's going to ask you? Are you sure? Is that quite a guy? A meddling friend. I hear you. Boy, do I hear um, you. <laughs> the thing is, though, because let me tell you something, church. God wants a church. He wants a church who you are to be totally submitted to Him. No questions asked. Remember your debates with God and the Calvary. Oh, Jesus. Lord, we just cancel all the assignments in this valley against every person in this valley. See, I've been praying for everybody in this town to get saved. Amen. Not some. All. Like I told you, we're beating down the, the, the covens and everything in this valley. We saw more visions of it Friday night, Wednesday night. I saw it this weekend. But what I'm praying for is their salvation. You want to make the devil mad? Pray that everybody that's in the occult and the planet gets saved. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You want to start a firestorm in the heavenlies? You yes. want to put the angels to work? Start praying that. Because they're just servants of darkness that can come into the light. And every one of you was a servant of darkness before you got saved. You may look at them as they're evil people, but we were no different before salvation. Amen. Well, not you, David. Just... <laughs> yes. Okay, yes. Yeah. First Corinthians 15, 50 to 58. We're just going to read 54 to 58. Watch how important this is, what God has done for you. Why we should walk fearless and blameless before Him all the days of our lives. No fear of death, none whatsoever. Watch, watch what Paul says. So when this corruptible, that's you still have that nature. You still have your flesh, has put on what? Incorruption. This mortal has put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. See, God spoke that by the Holy Spirit through the prophets. In Isaiah and Hosea. He already said He was going to swallow up death. He already knew He was going to come and die and rise again. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, mm -hmm. always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. See, the taste of death, which I've tasted it before, and that sting, Jesus took that for you. Amen. See, when you die, when you go back and read in Romans, it's in the twinkling of an eye. Let me tell you something. You are never going to taste death. He did it for you. The sting of death that you would have suffered, He suffered so you never will. So when you leave here, it's faster than that. You're home. The Bible says, everybody says, well, no, the, the graves, no, the graves were open when He died and rose again if you read the Bible. Mm -hmm. How many witnesses were raised from the grave? And, and if they're waiting to get your heavenly body, it's another one that says you don't get your heavenly body till he comes back. Let me explain something to you. Read the Mount of Transfiguration when Elijah and Moses were talking to Jesus and Peter and them went, oh, this is different. God was in all his glory. So they already had their heavenly body. They were already glorified. Amen? Amen. He says, I'm the God of the living. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not the God of the dead. Dead people are those that go to hell. You're going to heaven. He's the God of the living. So don't ever think you're going to wait and you're going to go hang out somewhere till God comes for His church. No, He's coming for His church every second of every day as people go home to be with Him. Amen. I've been to heaven. I saw a lot of saints. Praise God. They already had the heavenly body on. And it's really cool. I mean, it's just like, it makes my heart so happy to know what's awaiting me. That's why this temporary suffering and the stuff we go through end. Mm -hmm. End. Mm -hmm. Life happens. There are some bumps in the road. Just a few. Mm. Nothing. <laughs> She's laughing. 
But do you see what God's telling you today, church? Why do you ever fear leaving here? You should be so fearless in your boldness for Christ right now because you're never going to taste the sting of death. Amen. Hades is some place is only reserved for Satan, his demons, and those that die without Christ. Not for you. See, so the death part of this, this natural body, when you get on your incorruptible body, see, you should be so fearless in your witness for Jesus because we're never going to taste any of that. Amen. Amen. Never. And it amazes me after all these years how many Christians are afraid when they're leaving or how they're leaving. Who cares how God takes you home? I'm going from the pulpit. I don't know about the rest of you. I told you. If Elijah can have chariots of fire, come get him. I expect at least that. You got more anointing than all the old prophets put together. All of you do. Do you know that? They wish they could be here. They wish they could be in the days we're in. They waited on the Holy Spirit to come on them, to empower them, to give them words. You got the hope of glory, the fullness of the Godhead dwelling inside of you. You have so much. Don't have a desire even to be like King David. He was a great king. Greatest one ever born, probably. But he had his shortcomings. He waited for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came on him. You got the Holy Spirit in you. We got God in here. We have so much more than the old covenant now. We have power and dominion that they didn't have. They had to call on God. They had to call on heaven. I don't have to call on heaven. Heaven lives inside of me. And all that he is is in me. Man, I know when I speak, God's going to move. Because the words that speak my word, and it won't fall to the ground. Speak my word, it won't return to me empty or void without accomplishing that which I sent forth to do. So when I send the word somewhere, it's going to do what it was sent to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's so important. If you got your Bibles, we're going to close with Hebrews 2. Oh, somebody's singing. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Go. God sending you a text, Joe? Yes. Oh, praise God. I like those messages from heaven. Amen? Yes. See, I'm so happy today because I know what He's done for me. Amen. I know what He's finished. We should be the most joyous people walking the earth. Yeah, do you get... Does life hit you sometimes? Does your heart get hurt sometimes? Yes, it does, church. To think it won't, you're, you're fooling yourself because it's going to happen. Every one of you saints has been through stuff. Every one of you saints has been through suffering and sorrows. Every one of you have. But he'll turn that sorrow to joy so you can help heal others. Amen. We are spiritual doctors. Amen? Amen? That's why you let God heal whatever wounded you so you can help heal others. That's what we're here for. Hallelujah? Amen. In Hebrews 2, remember something. Jesus came as a man and in the flesh to destroy death. See, he had to come as a man in a human body. First of all, so he can sympathize with your weaknesses, like it says in Hebrews. And so he, you can have compassion on others. See, if you see what he gave up, how he walked, how he died and rose again, you need to see yourself in the same footprints. Because <clears throat> until you see yourself in the same footprints as Jesus, you won't see yourself going to the cross, being put in the tomb, and being raised as a new creation. That's why Jesus had to come in the flesh to destroy its power over you. See, if you're a crucified vessel and you've said no to your flesh and you've allowed God to really truly crucify your earthly thinking and, and desires and stuff for the things of the world instead of the things that are eternal in heaven, that means your whole body, heart, and mind, and soul has been changed over into the likeness of God. In 2, 14 and 15, it says, Inasmuch then the children have partaken of flesh and blood, Watch this. He himself, likewise, shared in the same. See, he had to come in the flesh to, to crucify it. To put, to put it to death. That through death, he might destroy him who had the power of death. You know what that says? See, Satan until that time had the power. Had the power. The empty tomb. He didn't have any power. He can't take you. Your time has not yet come. That's why you're sitting here this morning. That is the devil, and release those who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Revelation 1.18, it says, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen? And I have the keys to Hades and to death. 
no fear. See, the devil's in the past tense. He's been defeated and said that in Colossians. He's been disarmed. He's been rendered powerless. You've been baptized into the death of Christ, raised into the newness of life in Christ. Amen. See, we got to really allow the Spirit of the Lord to show us what He made us into. Amen. It is that's what your freedom is. He's the bondage breaker. I remember that one book I read, The Bondage Breaker. What a great book that was. It's taking your thoughts captive so you start speaking who you are. Amen. See, you should be up every day speaking who you are. That whole list I got of 30-something, 40-something scriptures here. I am this in Christ. I am that in Christ. You start repeating that out loud over your life, it'll go into your ears. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word. Word of God. What it's made you. What it's made you. Like I said, church, we need to go back to being the happiest people on the planet. And it doesn't happen in Disneyland. No. <laughs> Them perverts are molesting children. Oh, no. Just sharing. Yeah. Watch where you send your children. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Disney's turned into a very corrupt corporation. They're part of the darkness over our children. It's amazing how many people got involved with Disney and what did they do to our children there? How many of these kids that were even on the Disney Channel came out okay? No, they didn't. They destroyed their lives. Amen? Amen. Like I said, you raise them in the ways and the admonition of the Lord. It is then that your children will turn out right. Now, if something happens in those children, stop blaming yourself. Children start getting older, they start making choices for themselves. You can feed a child the gospel all their lifetime, all their childhood, and guess what's going to happen? If they decide not to follow in what you taught them, you know what? They miss out, not you. Stop blaming yourself for the choices of children. So many people, when children become adults, they're adults now. You did your best. My parents did their best. Boy, the only one that straightened me out was God. Amen. But thank God my parents don't have to put up with me no more. They're home with Jesus. <laughs> and I'll see them again. And I'll see them again. That's what I mean. This world is so temporal, church. Love you guys. Say hi to Alex for me. We will. Encourage him that it's all Love good. Yes. Amen. We will. Amen. <clears throat> wow. What a great day. Yes. He's alive. Yes. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Man. God is so good. You know, some of you are afraid to let God love you. Some of you sitting here, not just those watching on the internet, because you don't want Him to touch you. I cry with just God. How could you not want the God of love that we just talked about? who was nailed to a cross, who conquered sin and death, who paid for your salvation with His own blood, who washed you and made you holy and worthy children of Almighty God, how could you not want Him to touch what's hurt you? He promises to restore your soul and heal your broken heart. See, all these things that Jesus promises, all these things that He's accomplished, but until church we really lay our lives down, and surrender our all to Christ, you will carry that around. you will carry it around. The only thing it's going to do is hurt you. It breaks God's heart because His desire is that you can be completely whole in Him. Your life is hidden with God in Christ. Amen? Amen. Spirit, soul, heart, mind, and body, you're complete with God in Christ. But you're not complete if you're carrying around something that's old in you. You're not completed yet. See, you can live out here as it is in heaven on earth now. You don't have to wait to get to the promised land. That's what too many Christians do. Oh, it's going to be great in heaven. Why isn't it great now? Kenneth Hagin Sr. said that. Oh, it's going to be great in heaven. Well, why aren't you living that way now? Why isn't your life great now? Because we're so focused on the world and not on the one who came and died and rose again, who lives within us. You know where my joy comes from? Loving Jesus. I'm blessed with an awesome, beautiful, godly wife, a beautiful ministry. I just love coming here because you're my family. I love being here. I love being here. 
this place was open seven days a week, I'd probably be in here seven days a week. Because this is what my family is. This is where I want to see the unsaved come in here and get delivered and healed and made whole like we are. Amen? Amen. So today, when you celebrate Resurrection Sunday, when you leave here, celebrate it when you leave here. Celebrate it tomorrow morning and Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning. Because you're all the temples that carry around the resurrecting Christ. Colossians 1.27 The hope of glory who rose on the third day is in you. Is in you. Let us celebrate Jesus in everything that we say and do. Amen? Amen. And let us get out there and tell people Jesus is alive. Because that's the message today, church, for the world. All these false religions, they got their statues, they got their idols, they got multiple gods. There's only one true God. There's only one Savior. There was none before Him. And there will be none after Him. Amen? Amen. Now, Father, we thank You for Resurrection Sunday. But, Lord, let us never forget that empty tomb. Because that is what has opened up heaven. When Jesus said it is finished, the veil was torn in two. So we have access to you, Father, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, until that glorious day when you take us home. Lord, I thank you that we never forget all that your son Jesus did for us, Father. All that he accomplished for us. He did so much more than we even ever talk about. But let us go out into this city, into this state, and into the world, and share that Jesus is alive forevermore. He was once dead, but He has risen. And the power of that resurrection that's alive in us, Lord, let us tell people that our hope is in Jesus and in Jesus alone. Let the world see how we're filled with His joy, with His peace, with the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us never be the same today, Father. Put a fire in our hearts to go out and share Jesus. Because we're not any Savior. We're not, what we are is vessels of the Savior. We're vessels of the healer, of the deliverer, of the chain breaker. We just speak the word of God and it comes off our tongue and goes out and produces fruit. So I thank you that we are trees of righteousness, almighty God. I thank you that we're empowered to do the greater works, O oh God. For you've promised me the days we're going to come into, the greater works are going to manifest on all that believe and know that you're going to live through them. So I thank you for the confirmation of your word in every saint in this house. You're blessing everybody. You're touching everybody today. And Lord, I just pray a blessing upon them that of the unspeakable joy. Because you're the Prince of Peace. Fill their hearts. Remove that sorrow I see. And replace it with your love and your joy. In Jesus' mighty and holy name. Amen and amen. And amen, church. And amen, church. And amen, church. Amen. Jimmy. Father, we just anoint this plant right now as He takes it home the joy of the dawn. That this is going to bring life and healing to their bodies right now in Jesus' name. I thank You to send the Word inside this living plant, the tree of life, to their home. It's going to bring unspeakable joy and peace and healing to their bodies today. As You told me to send this back to their home, Lord. And when Jimmy walks in with it, they're going to know that Jehovah Rapha walked in the house. And He's here to heal them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.